Hey guys and girls, welcome to the TI5 Chinese qualifiers. Did I get that right? Are we doing Chinese? <laughs> yes, we are. And of well course, done. I'm Great. joined by my friends, Drasco, Gods, and Sindarin. Howdy. Howdy. You good? I'm good. How we're, are you? We, uh, we're, we're starting soon. Are we going to exchange pleasantries when we know that there's already things happening? I guess it's okay. It's fine. I'm okay with it. Yeah. You look good today, Drasco. Thank you. Much right, better than yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, let's have a look at the team. So we've got Energy Pacemaker versus Wings. This is the, I guess we could call this the lower bracket semi-final in a way. It depends on how you name it. Some people yep. call it lower bracket final, some call it final, or lower bracket final, and then the next constellation. Whatever you want to call it, this is the game that gives you a chance at getting second. So um, pretty important game, of course. They Both teams have been, they finished second in their groups, respectively. That's why they're here. And... We talked about it a little bit at the end of the previous series, I think, how we all favor Wings, I think, for this. But you think it's going to go three games, God? I, think, I think Wings will do 2 0, oh, I guess. But yeah. it's not really that unlikely for it to be a three game series. Does anyone, no one favors EP, right? No, I, I think I'm kind of more siding with Gods. I think it'll be maybe three games, but I do think Wings will take yeah. it. Okay. I think this series will be interesting with the drafts too, because the, the teams play a few more versatile heroes, like Super plays Wisp. I think both, team, both teams actually play Wisp, so we could see some different things come out. They'll both be looking for the Joe Ranger, but um, I, yeah, I think this will be a close series. I want to say that PL is going to be a contention point. They lo yeah. love going PL, and they love going BKB PL, which is, I guess, the new breed of uh, how you play the hero. Um, I, but I, I think it's 2-0 for Wings, because... They were the team that's closest at taking games off C deck, and yeah. um, well, C deck just got dismantled by Ehome. Yeah, well, so. <laughs> mean. and EP got well, one point behind Ehome in that's, the that's in fair. the group. So. That's fair. Oh yeah, e wait, did EP win a game against? EHOME? No, they, they did, did not. not right? But they were okay. one point behind in the yeah. standings because they they won their other games, which Ehome did not. So, yeah, I think EP as a whole though were pretty consistent. Like they beat the teams they were meant to beat, then they lost to Ehome. So, uh, as far as their group stage performance went, it was very solid. So a pretty uh, non-standard Wind Ranger ban on the first draft, but that's an old chicken ban, yeah, right? Yeah, old chicken respect. Yeah. What a tag! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, that is, yeah. it's the best nickname in, in the Chinese qualifiers. He plays yeah. a sick Wind Ranger, though. Had yeah, a chance yeah. to see it yesterday. It was completely insane. And less, what are, these two bands are just not heroes you'd normally expect to see banned out. Opt yesterday. Um, I think it was Wings beat it down. Yeah, C deck versus, or sorry, Wings versus HGT, and that's what allowed Wings to actually come into the stage. So. Wings are uh, very prepared against Draw Ranger and Visage. Opening with a Shadow Fiend, though? I mean, against a draw composition mm -hmm. in general, yeah, Shadow Fiend can kind of snowball off his lane if he gets a little bit of early help, but looks like they're not even going to go for it. I don't right. mean like draft wise, I meant like mentally. They, they, they know oh, okay. what to expect. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see what you mean. All right, Clock is going to be paired up with Gyro, which obviously in late game, when you, your Clock hooks in, you can actually flock off the, the Cogs. So Gyro is going to be hitting stuff. Cogs and uh, call down always a good combo, but and this is just really really strong laners that we see being uh, heavily drafted nowadays. It's hard yeah. to really discern too much from what EP uh, want to do with these heroes. I mm -hmm. think that's kind of what you were alluding to. Yeah. I feel though, I really think has Clockwork lost a game? Not obviously he's lost games, but I mean when the Clockwork gyrocopter combination was picked at one, correct? I can't remember a loss for this duo. There probably was one, but it seems to have a really high win rate, at least. Yeah, I feel like every single game, because Gyro is obviously the early game fighting hero. You have Clockwork mid-game for initiation, being able to find high-priority targets, and we can see Wings here also picking up the, the Rubik's. So, I don't know. I think the opening two from EP, I'm, I'm a big fan. Yeah, and the Rubik, on the other hand, has had a, 
a lot of losses throughout the Chinese qualifiers. It's been one of those supports that, kind of like the Earthshaker from last series, where it's getting first two picked, but it's losing a lot of games. It's not always having that kind of impact you'd expect from one of your first two picked heroes. Maybe it's a denial from EP. Take it away from the Gyrocopter. It's a very common pairing with that support hero well, who has high damage. It's their second pick, though. If they want to deny oh, yeah. it, they just ban it at that point. So. But do you really... I mean, they banned AA. They, they could have banned it instead of AA, I guess, if they're worried about Rubik. So. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, in this I, game, there's decent spells to steal from. Like, if you ever get a call down, that's yeah. a big win. Um, Stats-wise, I think Rubik was 11 and 14 coming into today. Okay. okay. Um, he, he was way worse on day one. Yeah. 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 So and then at day one. two, I think they want a C deck or one of the team won a whole bunch of games with it. So. Yeah, I think the reason Rubik has a decent win rate is, I want to say Wings might have had the best Rubik performance, at least as far as roaming duos go oh, yesterday. Oh, Super was so good. They, um, yeah. he, was, he destroyed that game, so... I I don't think it's like a deny pick. I think they're actually that confident in their Rubik play that they will first face pick it against anything because okay. this is not really a good Rubik match. He's good against Clockwork actually, so perhaps that's the that's the main reason. But I dare say that this Clockwork could have been any other hero, and they still would have picked Rubik. Okay, maybe not if it was Brood. Yeah, but you know. Now Wings are likely going to be generally they're running a pretty hard carry in XDD. He reminds me a lot of someone like Lakels, where he's kind of one dimensional. He plays these super late game oriented carries. That's where the Morphling Band comes into play. And even when they've already got the Shadow Fiend, they'll still generally pick XDD a second hard carry for the late game, which is where I feel like this series as a whole could see some long games just because of yeah. Wings' play style, especially. They did the same thing uh, when Wings were playing against C deck, I believe it was, and then. They had some really, really long games, and then it was just like one or two mistakes from Wings, unfortunately, ended up costing them the matches. So I think if they have like a similar style, it could work very well against EP. And I love the Morphling Band, because outside of the one or two mistakes XCD made in that game, I think he played phenomenally throughout. His other hero that he plays a lot is Spectre, yes. which pretty much no one else plays right now. But XTD has been playing it for quite a while, I believe. Uh, also... I believe on previous teams even. There's something about that name that makes me think of Spectre. He was on uh, DT Club last TI qualifiers. Yeah, he, he played Spectre, Spectre. Spectre yeah. and Morphling and, yeah. and that as well. So he, he still sticks his guns in this tournament. and They're not going to ban the Spectre though. So that's an opening pr potentially for Wings. And they actually ban the Dark Seer. Which, which helps a lot actually. He I don't know. Wings is very good with Spectre. Yeah, gen so. generally Wings does run Spectre, Dark Seer. Yeah. Okay, so... A Spectre is kind of one of those weird heroes, I feel, in this matchup, though, because EP, they've only shown their front two, and Gyrocopter is a really hardcore, I feel, to pick against, unless you want to do something similar to where you pick Juggernaut like we saw in the last series, which I feel sometimes can make... It can make not necessarily your team fighting weaker, but a lot of times these teams who go for early five-man, Jug is just straight up not good against that. So we could see what uh, what they decide to do. That's not really been energy pacemaker's style to go early five man though they're playing strong lane play into like how to explain it they they kind of have solid team fight in the mid game but not really pushing power seems to be the way they favor their lineups so um i don't think they need to worry about the the early five man this lena pick doesn't really signal anything going in that direction either so i do believe this is a Support lean. Yeah. I, I, one of the teams was running yeah. mid lane. I don't think it was EP during the no. group stages. I don't believe so either. It was but. the last team they played against. What was it? The one that secured them going further. It was not HGT. It was another team. Oh. It's a little bit different. Wang, Wang, yeah. Wang, Wang yeah. Zhou or Old Boys. Um, Old Boy was in Group A. Yeah. Well, it was so, Tong so Fu. EP. It was yeah. Tong Fu. You're right. Well, Tong, Tong, Tong Fu Wang Zhou. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Ooh, Tide Hunter. Tide, Wings Gaming, going to just pick up their offline and not really reveal too much. Probably in July's hero here. Gives them some good team fight And a hero we haven't seen much of throughout the qualifiers. He definitely has fallen off over the, the past few months here. Not many teams outside of maybe Vici Gaming on Ice 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 have still been running Tide Hunter. I think it's just the prevalence of these heroes like Gyro. Like, an offline Tide against Gyrocopter doesn't really seem that strong to me in general. Because, I mean, the, the heroes aren't relying on right clicks as much as they are. Getting, like, one or two disables on you and you just die yeah. to Rocket Barrage. It did get nerfed. But I still feel it's a, a substantial damage output during the early game. And plus, Tide, you don't have to fight on a two and a half minute cooldown, but it, it really feels like that hero functions best in that role. And I think Wings could be looking for maybe going uh, aggressive with that first Tide Hunter pick because I think if you get a matchup clock 1v1, it's not so bad for Tide. It's kind of like Spirit Breaker versus Clock we were talking about in the last series. Maybe a bit more lopsided for the clockwork, but. Oh, AP going for the DK. Yeah, I, I think if you're playing a Tidehunter offlane, there is no hero that's worse to play against than a Gyro. Yeah, so I agree. It's like the worst possible matchup. So if yes. they pick that, they're either either they're asking for it or they're going to run an aggressive Charlie. But 
I mean, at the same time, do you want to pick it so early? Because you don't want them to pick even more BKB carriers, which just nullifies Tide's mid-game power. I think they were just trying to hide their hand. Or they were like, we want Tide and we don't want to use all our time. Because they're actually fairly low in reserve time. I I don't know, though. It doesn't seem like an obvious pick for any reason, to be honest, at the point they picked it. Um, We'll see, though. There's going to be a Dragon Knight from Energy Pacemaker. I believe this is their... Might be their second Dragon Knight pick of this qualifier. I might have seen it one time before, but not really their go-to hero, uh, as far as I can remember, for Old Chicken in the mid lane. It's been playing more flashy heroes. Yeah. Oh, Rangers finally! Chen, okay. okay. Yeah. A team plays Chen. Well, Is this the first time? Um, first one I've seen in the China qualifier, yeah. I believe. Super I, I plays cannot a, believe it. That <laughs> Super <laughs> plays the heroes that most of the Chinese teams don't, like the, the Wisp a lot, the Chen, the Enchantress. He... One of the, the few players who actually still plays a lot of those uh, more jungle-oriented heroes. This is going to, like, for for future qualifiers in this, for future TI qualifiers, get ready to see this guy some more. Because this, this qualifier yeah. just ignored Chen, even though he is extremely good right now. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they just don't like to play it. I think uh, the American qualifier has been prioritized a lot more already. Uh, and I, I'm I'm going to say in the Europe qualifier, he's going to be a, a top pick. He will be a lot top man, actually, as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really interesting to see how big a difference there is. It reminds me of the qualifiers last year. I feel like it was the same thing, where each region had like a, an isolated meta that it would be fun if they would have played against each other. Because you would have seen, like, then the tournaments always develop their own meta. But in this in this case, they don't get to play against this kind of stuff so much. So if if China and Europe would have played each other in the qualifiers the draft would have been completely different at this stage you like, know the, the dream is the dream is uh they they make the, the qualifiers a major or yeah okay maybe you don't make it a major right but you fly all the teams in one location yeah and it's and it's not like a regional play. qualifier yeah just let them play against each other it's you, like a mini ti yeah that qualifies yeah get like the eight best teams from each region who would be and maybe have an open qualifier spot and then get every yeah like you yeah. say 32 yeah. teams competing just in go. ti qualifiers yeah. That yeah, it's insane. That's a Let's lot of it. that's a lot of people in one place to play qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty crazy. Val I wouldn't has mind. Money. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. So EP looking for their last support. They feel like they okay. Ooh, Phoenix, Phoenix comes out. Phoenix is really good huh. here. Yeah, that's like a nice crazy pick. Crazy good. The one nice thing for the Tide is that they don't have that clean initiation to like lead into like a telekinesis or like a magic missile from Avenge to actually lead into that rocket barrage for Gyrocopter, but. Right, we were on it's camera. Still, it's still yep. a tough one. I think it's All right, more, production. I, I think the <laughs> EP lineup to me, it's it's like based around Siege, right? You use the DK yeah. as a frontline hero. You have Clock for any kind of counter initiation. I think the matchup in the mid game is kind of annoying for Tidehunter because the Clockwork can isolate you if he ever spots you out. And then you kind of either sit there and don't ravage anything. And then you have to deal with Phoenix Egg, DK, potentially Gyrocopter, BKB. I actually think that EP, um, if the Chen doesn't do work on wings, I think the draft is way better. Yeah. And every hero on their lineup uses fire. That is so. That's that's the reason. That is why. true. Yeah. That is actually really good against. Well, Tide Hunter should be good against that. He's used to water. So mm. He's like a water Pokemon. This feels like a hard game for Tide in general because like Clockwork's initiating in, uses all his spells. As soon as Clock goes in with the Cogs, there's gonna be a cooldown coming out. Phoenix is in Supernova. It doesn't feel like there's that many like good, easy Ravage targets or opportunities that's gonna yeah. arise from versing those heroes. And how does it get into fights? Like that's yeah. my question. Is that he needs Blink hundred percent? He probably is also the team is dedicated. Well, Chan could get a Mech, I guess. But uh, some chance of actually in European Dota being opting out of mech and other tier, or heroes on the team buy it. And then he goes something else like early medallion, like Solar Crest is really yep. popular as well. I mean, either him or Shadow Fiend get it. I think that there's enough mech yeah. buyers that he doesn't have to do it. Yeah. I think a lot of the time when you run this particular duo, uh, I guess the, the duos we've seen the most with Chen have been Shadow Fiend and Bristle. And I think in most cases, it's actually better that the core gets it because they benefit a lot from the armor. They farm it faster. And the Chen, like you said, either goes for a Medallion or Solar Crest build, or in some cases, he wants to get Arcane Boots too. They're actually really good now after the buff yeah, yeah, in yeah. comparison. In the past, sometimes you'd get Brown Boots into uh, Mech. Or you can even, like, if you don't need Arcane Boots for the team, you get a Mango, and you just keep that with you so you can use Hand of God at any time, and then you itemize into something completely different on the Chen. Yeah. Like, you could even go for a well, really fast axe. Someone wants a four staff as well, because you're reversing Clockwork. Is, That's yeah, probably the, that would be the, really good too. The one other item someone needs to be able to be at the Tide or the Chen. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and hop in game here. Thank you guys very much for joining us during the pre-panel here. Lumi, are you ready? I am ready. Are you? I I think uh, Clockwork is not ready because his ward uh, just got warded in vision of the Radiant team, so she could be uh, dewarded very quickly. That is pretty unfortunate. Although he's uh, prepared because he's got double blocks. Actually, the first one doesn't even block at all. It's just a no, scatter. it's just a vision ward, yeah. yeah. I don't even think that one blocks the large camp. No, it doesn't. 
has some really weird like ward placements in the Radiant Jungle. You can drop that ward like maybe a tiny bit closer and it even blocks the large spawn. It's kind of crazy. So one thing that uh, when I was casting with Chuan, he said, if you're playing Chen, you need to make sure that two out of your three lanes are self-sustaining. Like you can't have a lane losing in the bottom, a lane losing mid, and expect your Chen to actually just make things work. Mirror on top lane here, Tai Hunter should be okay. He's going to get dive slow dive down. Slow. Level one. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, level that, one that's stun into a lane strike array, yeah. How did he get caught there? The Lina well, just wrapped behind him? I don't know, that was a little bit odd. I feel like the, the level 1 dive from the Phoenix is a... Uh, I mean, you obviously get dive at level 1 regardless, unless you have a very easy lane, and then maybe you get spirits. But yeah, it was definitely not the start that Angel I was looking for. So, energy pacemakers get themselves on the board with an early kill, and so far we're seeing the Phoenix kind of chilling mid, probably just blocking yep. right now for the DK. There you go. You know what a cool combo uh, EP could do is... Uh, you you clock you hook in you clock uh, you cog and then the dive comes in and you dive in the middle of the cog and you supernova there. I mean, suddenly half the team can't attack it, especially the juggernaut who has the high attack speed. I'm not sure if that's drafted with the intention, but that's something cool that they could do. Well, the other thing too about Phoenix against this lineup is there's only one real natural BKB buyer, and the juggernaut. I mean, I guess you could technically hit the spinning. egg while you're spinning, but I still feel like it's going to be very difficult for them to deal with that because. Phoenix is not just a strong laner, but he adds the chaotic teamfight presence where you pretty much have to focus Supernova unless you want to just straight up sacrifice the uh, the engagement in general. Chen will trade with you. Yeah. Well, they, they Zero both, armor. Well, Chen, it's not like he's... Uh, but he yeah. doesn't buy as much regen as the Phoenix. So that I is think true. The, the Phoenix actually ends up on top here. He even got pulled a Tango. So yeah, he'll be fine with that trade. Mid lane looks like a couple of raises are going off and DK in a little bit of trouble. Oh, tornado. Long raise. He's got bottle. I think he's okay. Or no, he's fine. Okay, but good trade close. for the Shadow Fiend, uh, especially now with the tornado just harassing that DK, zoning him further out the lane. It's going to be important for that bottom rune, uh, for that DK especially. I think the matchup in mid is actually so bad for the DK in general, and plus that tornado just means that the SF from now on is just going to be totally free farming on wings. Mm -hmm. And old chicken, regardless of how well he plays on some heroes, DK is fairly limited. I feel and and what your player skill can actually do for you. Yeah. Looks like we're going to see a little bit of stacking. Having that tornado, co the tornado creep will uh, secure you a bit of farm. Wing's going to secure... Oh, just missing it on the bottom. That is painful, actually. Yeah. Not having to pull for GDH. Rubik's one of the... Like, you need six, pretty much. Like, you actually want higher than that for some value points in a null field, especially against EP's lineup. I feel like they're almost entirely magic damage based until a little bit later into the game, but... Did he just block his own stack? I don't think he blocked it on the upper left, but... Looks like Tyhunter is going to get a little bit of stuck. But I don't think he... Yeah, he, he'll be fine. I mean, that was just a spite stun, right? He just yeah. wanted to use mana to use a bottle charge, be more efficient with a player. Flame Breath would have been a little bit better if he wanted to do that, though. No way, man. Level 1 Dragon Tail. <laughs> Super high damage skill. Into uh, two more hits and a couple of illusion hits. That's fine. But still, I, I'm kind of worried. Like, Blink is getting so much in this middle lane. He's already 16 and 10. I mean, yeah, DK maybe doesn't need, like, free farm, for example, but he's got 6 CS at 2 minutes in. And the Chen really hasn't had to commit to any lane. That's a nice thing about getting the Wildkin, is instead of having to go for a, a full wraparound gank, like Super has been able to spend his time, majority of the time, in the woods. And the Phoenix has been messing with him a bit, but he's level 1 right now, so I yeah, don't think it's too bad. What we're seeing in the draft is that EP at least has the, the much stronger mid-game fight, so Wings need to do this in the early game to kind of even have a, a good shot in the mid-game, right? Especially with the Tyhunter giving up first blood and not having a good time at all. He's got like 2 CS. So well... I think the getting 2CS thing is what we said during the draft is that the Gyrocopter versus Tide lane is not very good. So I'm, oh god. I'm still kind of wondering why they picked the Tide in the first place. Like he just takes, what, 60-70% of his health and damage from one, one Rocket Barrage. Yeah. Juggernaut though, dealing quite a bit back on the bottom lane. So what are you looking for this Juggernaut to do? Are you looking at to, to play kind of the, the melee Gyro in the sense of a mid-game fighter? Or are we looking to build a little bit more kind of later mid-game of semi-carry? No, I think you need mid-game for sure. But if you don't play around mid-game against EP's lineup, I think you just end up losing all your towers and potentially the game. Because wings right now have one lane that's auto-lose. Like, off-lane is losing. Yep. Safe lane is doing okay. Winning to jungle lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have jungle and you have win midding, or mid-winning pretty hard. Yep. So between those two, it's kind of the setup that Chuan says that he looks for, where you don't need... The, the Chen to rotate 24-7, and he can kind of focus on his farm, especially since the Phoenix is not bothering him so much anymore. Mm. Oh. oh, I can't believe I let him get that. Well, He's got dive as well. Normally so. that's good. Not but, against Phoenix. Yeah. yeah, yeah. you make him lose a little bit of health. There's that. I don't know. I, I don't really feel 
Like, even just taking the invis, a lift can set up for a double or triple raise on the DK. Yeah. I think people underestimate the value of Rubik's support with SF mid. That rotation is unbelievably strong as, as long as your SF is on point with his raises. And he's, what, like level 5 right now? Or Especially at least on the mid close. lane. If you could lift them into oh, that crevice. Wow. Okay. If you lift them into that crevice on the low ground, that generally almost always guarantees a kill. Yeah. But DK leading the farm and the denies as well. That that tornado on the mid lane just essentially won. DK, what do you want? To Sorry, play? S SF. <laughs> I was leading. gonna say, yeah. what game are you watching? Seventeen to nine. Crazy. Oh, bottom lane, nice rotation here. They're gonna catch up the clockwork. Unfortunately, I guess the centaur stomp miss, or the first one did, yeah. So they weren't able to follow it up. So though, I mean, the gyrocopter is still farming a little bit better than the juggernaut. They're contesting the lane. Old chicken gonna eat a gush here. One raise. Can they connect with another? I think that was the long range. Dive in. Fire spirits coming out in July. On retreat here. Breathe fire. Just for spite purposes. He's got a full bottle here, so Blink will be fine. That's a one fight, though, for Wings, because two TP was drawn. And in fact, Clockwork even finishes TP, so he has to walk bottom. I still think this SF is going to be such an issue for EP. If they yeah. can find a way to somehow kill him, the Clockwork hitting six is a big deal. If you compare the offlaners again, as we could see this Clockwork in some trouble, here comes the lift. He's going to be pulled back. Exidy's there. He's got the spin. He's going to auto-attack him a few times, but again, Ooh. the Centaur is not quite in range. He gets caught here. Spin's actually on cooldown. He levels up his Omni Slash, but it's not in time. Ends up dying inside of the Cogs. Rest of Wings is going to be forced back. Well, thank you for the freebie. Now he's very close to that level 6. He like hit 6 said. during that, right? Like the Gyrocopter, or not, uh, the Juggernaut hit 6 during that engagement. I think like so. Like one of the creeps died, and then he skilled Omni Slash, maybe but he trying to use it. he couldn't get off in time. Has a... Well, I don't think his cast animation even went off. So... Yeah, that was... That was unfortunate. That was really bad because that gave Clockwork the level 6. I mean, he's got 21 CS right now. Tidehunter has 8. And Tidehunter is also 2 levels behind. So EP have all the makings of being able to gank this SF now. Just getting that level 6 up on the Clockwork, I feel, is really huge for them. So if you're playing on EP side, let's say you have like a jungle stack or two. Do you say, alright, Tidehunter, you're really far behind. You take it too far to catch up? Or do you say, you know, SF is our kind of mid-game bread and butter. He... Probably he's going to buy an early mech or early BKB. Hold that thought. Here comes a gank. I don't think they're going to die here. Yeah, old chicken's going to be fine. Here comes that clockwork hook, but the first hook is not really going on the SF. Not even sure whether they're going to get the kill. Tie Hunter forced to run towards the tower. Will die to a dragon slave. TP incoming in from Jaro as well. Call down will not hit. Or at least not the second one. Super should run to the tower. One raise will wear them away. I will say will hit. So will dragon slave, but very tanky is that Shadow Fiend. Got 13 one charge, and he is going to be going for the mech. Yeah, I like the mech build. I think you always want to give the stacks to the SF, by the way. Not, I mean, having a blink on the Tidehunter would be great, but I think if the SF gets, like, mech BKB, EP will have a very, very hard time killing him in the mid-game, just because Gyro, DK, Clockwork, like, all these heroes, even as carries, can be mostly comprised of magical damage output during the mid-game. So I'm wondering... Well, Chen's taking the stack. Yeah, I mean, if he wants to go for something else, too, that's fine. Like, if he wants his Arcanes, as Sin spoke about earlier, just to be able to have more sustain during your push... I think that's okay. But. I mean, I'm okay with SF and Chen taking the goal, but I think that the tie needs to be there for the experience. Because, for example, if Ty had six in that mid-fight, would have been a different story. He is getting, again, a little bit of experience up top, but, you know, I think Fan, even under the tower, could just phase in and just zone him out. It is possible, sure. But I think the, the worry is there could be TP reaction. Like, the Clockwork is still kind of playing off map at the moment, so it's an inherent risk to try to go for anything super crazy. And there's no vision right now on bottom lane. So. Oh, Omni Slash is available, but looks nice like Nice pogs. Yeah. Now it looks like they're going for a loop around here on top lane. They're going to find Angelai again. Fan eating some tower shots. Could drop here. One more hit will be able to secure the kill on him. And now Dragon Tail under the tower. JDH going to be dropping here as well. Fire Spirit damage ends up getting that kill. So two now going the way of EP, and they're pressuring the tier one. Now that tier one's going down. Dragon form is uh, going to easily seal the deal there. So EP finding... I don't want to say free because they did lose Gyro, but... I think they're okay with that trade. Oh, for sure. I mean, losing the gyro is not really as big of a deal when you consider they get a tower and the first dragon form doing something. That's also a huge deal. Yeah. Oftentimes you use it and like SF, Blink is one of those heroes that you don't actually leave your lane too often. Oh, he's caught out here inside of the cogs. The Omni Slash is available. XDD goes in. That's going to be a free kill. Teleport reaction coming in. It's going to be Fan. He gets a rocket barrage off, but Spin is available. So XDD is just out of here. All right, so... I'm going to say this is the timing they're looking for, right? You got the mech almost finished, you got the Chang Crease, but looks like it's going to be difficult to push against a team that has Dragon Slave, LSA, Fiery Birds, Rockets, Call Fiery Down. Birds. Fiery Souls, I think <laughs> it's called. No, that's Lena's uh, passive. Fiery Spirits, yeah. yeah. Okay, Fiery Birds. Is Fiery Birds sounded funny, that's yeah. all. 
But I, I do agree that their timing is maybe a little bit stronger than EP were even looking at. Mm -hmm. It's so early on, and the DK is still less than half of the CS of the Shadow Fiend. I mean, heck, Blink has been able to keep up the deny level in terms of what that uh, old chicken has and creep kills. So that's a little bit concerning for EP. But don't underestimate how good their lineup is with just the sheer leveling. So having the Clockwork Hook, having the call down. We haven't seen everything used in conjunction yet. So I'm kind of reserving my judgment until I see some really big fights break out. I'm not sure Wings what it could, they could even push in the first place. Like, you got the timing, but I don't think you could push it into the AoE. So I don't think Wings should try, but we'll see. I'm not sure how you feel about whether they should go try to at least lock, lock down the mid-T1 tower. Having a really early mech, they probably could push in with the Chen. Because the tower is really low right now. I think it's at like 30% health, maybe a little bit less. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's way less. It's almost in the eye range. So I think they could potentially secure it. I'm not sure how heavily EP would commit to that fight. Because Tidehunter has Ravage. And I think that when you're pushing into a tower, you don't necessarily need the blink on the tide because EP will come to you. Yeah. Like the clockwork will hook in. You'll see the call down come out. And the team will commit to the fight. So maybe EP don't look to defend. Instead, uh -oh. they try to go for a gank on XCD. That's going to be a fog. Dragon Tail into a stun and a slave. Hook shot to follow up the stun lock. And XCD goes down. Yeah, perfectly play. So I'm really impressed with Ofan's play, right? Even though he's lost the mid lane, completely making it work, at least on the ganking path. But here comes Wings. They will have that Ravage available, but looks like oh. Lina's going to break that smoke. If Lina dies here, I think EP is fine with it if they don't lose anybody else. And it looks like Lina will go down for sure. Ty Hunter coming in. He's looking for the Ravage. Well, Dragon Knight's out. And it looks like Clock's going to just walk away. Still a really nice trade. Like, trading the Lina for a Juggernaut at this stage. I yeah. really like the fact that Angelai didn't use the Ravage for a solo kill. I feel like that would have been a huge mistake when you have a Chen on your team and you can push the towers. You want to wait for a better opportunity because now Wings can look to counter pressure to the Tier 1. Is that an early pipe or Vlad's on the Chen, you think? Uh, it might be a pipe against this team. If Ooh, can what a left. Of the cogs. See you later. Yeah. Super picks up that kill. They do manage to deny the Tier 1 mid, so Old Chicken's getting a little bit of work done even though he can't contribute to the fight. And top, gonna see Fan go for the TP out. Omni Slash not used here by XTD. I wonder if they had Glyph. You would Glyph the bottom T1, deny the mid, and Glyph again. That would be pretty sick. But this tower is destined to go down. Let's see if they can actually get off a deny. They'll try. And Team he will get oh, it. what? Okay, that was insane. He timed his auto attack between like three different members of Wings. Anytime I see that happens, I just feel like the pushing team is just a little bit lazy because you could easily prevent that. Just high just need to walk in and they'll back off. I don't know, maybe he was feeling a little bit scared. I guess maybe he didn't know that Fan TP back to base. With that knowledge, I think you definitely run into him, like 100% of the time. Old Chicken's got an invis here. What that, a stack. That Dragon Tail, yeah, the stack efficiency as well. Very nicely done. Oh, he's got invis and DD. They could even kill XDD here if he goes around. Yeah, he's going to have Dragon Form too. He spun. He has TP though, is he going to use it? Oh, I think he's too fast actually. Yeah, he's got drum speed. Well? Oh, he didn't see it. It was well. nighttime. Okay, okay. But he needs follow-up. No one is even near him right now. He needs the gyrocopter 100%. Well, he's stalking him right now. But here comes the, the Radiant support. Hand of God is online, so you got to factor in mind. Factor that in mind. Maybe you could go for the Chen kill? Oh, they see each other. Here we go. It's going to be Call Down coming in. Rabbit's going to come out. Hand of God will be used. It's going to be Fan taking a ton of damage in return. The mech's going to come through on the other side. And Old Chicken is running to the left. Fiery Birds are coming in. So will Hook and a actually really good Supernova in the background. Laguna Blaze is going to drop. Looks like the Juggernaut is dead automatically. And Wings really over committing after that Ravage. Ty Hunter forced to retreat as well. I think he will die. Rubik getting a little bit of help here. They might actually pick off the Lina. No, they won't. It's going to be four dead at the end of the fight. Could be five because Shen's being stalked as well. Nice push to the left. They're still chasing him. And they will finish the Rubik. So four for one exchange after using the Ravage. I think they, uh, like you said, they overcommitted for sure. Like they Ravage there. The Flare comes out. Not enough damage to kill Super. He's got a Ring of Health and a Headdress. So the regen is more than enough to keep him in fighting shape. Yeah, so Pipe. Now we're going to get a chance to watch this again too. At the beginning of the fight, I think maybe the Shadow Fiend even prematurely popped mech. Because XCD takes a lot of damage here. I think he was just worried that he was going to go down. Like Super pops Hand of God. Heals one person. No, and Angelai got healed too. The, the mech. Okay, so Angelai got a little bit of health from that. But yeah. even that difference, like, I think those both of those were used way, way too early. The hook shot's even way off, but it does kind of block the retreat, I guess, of wings, and it forces them to fight into uh, EP, where the Phoenix Egg does a little bit of damage. Blink ends up clicking oh. it down, but by that time, you've committed your Shadow Fiend. Or the, no, excuse me, it, it went off, actually. He didn't even kill it. Yeah, well, the, His auto attack was midair. Exactly. Could oh. have actually killed it. And God. Okay, so that's actually the difference maker. The the fact that they used the mech and maybe the Chen heal a little bit too early, and they didn't kill the Phoenix Egg. So, yep. unfortunate. 
I mean, I, I think uh, I was pointing out earlier the clockwork uh, cogs plus the eggs is just so much crowd control. Um, and that was a perfect display of it cutting off the retreat path. And then on the far end, you have a Phoenix. I'm not Rex. sold he meant to do that, actually. The, the cutting off go, retreat path? I think he was trying to go for somebody in the back, like maybe the Rubik or the Chen. Either case, I, I think just having cogs in a fight, that also render Chen's creeps. Like, it makes them like run around things. and Yeah. Cogs OP, I think. I can see the aggressive warden coming out from EP right now. They're, they're really just looking to find those ganks. Three wards behind even a, a tier 1 tower right now in, in the woods and, of course, towards that top lane. But we talked about the mid-game potential of Energy Pacemaker, and they're kind of showing right, right now. I think wings could definitely still... like They can push in, but they have to be very, very precise about using their mech timing, their hand of God, and even having the pipe up on super will make a massive difference in these engagements. All right, let's quickly look at some item progression here. I'm very curious on what Gyrocopter is working with. Um, drums, and I imagine BKB's got to be the next item. Maybe he'll get Yasha first for a little bit of uh, extra farming, but you kind of want that early BKB against uh, the Requiems, the, the Ravage. Any items that's kind of uh, strange to you, Andy, or it's... It's looking pretty standard. Yeah, pretty standard. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk about the Chen Pipe? It's not exactly something we see at least this early into the game. It did get buffed. I mean, look at Energy Pacemaker's team, right? Like, even being able to block the Phoenix damage alone is a huge deal. So you get the 400 damage buffer. You have 10% magic resist on top of Null Field. We're going to see a smoke up here. It's wings. scouted. Because they have oh, yeah, behind it was yeah, behind the tier 1. They did oh, draw a man. line into the Roshan pit, which I think actually will catch Ishii EP by surprise. They're still backing up, though, because you would still run to Roshan in the situation if you thought it was going to be there. Well, like, no, you they're... wouldn't just sit inside of your woods. Oh, they are running to Roshan. They will smoke up and try to yeah. go to Roshan themselves. They won't find anybody. Well, yeah, okay. That's a little bit painful for Wings. More so than for Energy Pacemaker. Like, yeah, they waste the smoke, but their team composition, I feel, functions better during the mid-late game than what Wings have. So the, the smoke dodge, I think, benefits EP in the end. Yeah. Yeah, I think the pipe on the Chen really allows them to push these towers, which previously your creep will just die. Your Chen creep will just die. Now I'll let them uh, survive a little bit longer. EP will use the end of that smoke. Looks like Wings is going to try to get a tier 1. Just tier 1 trade. Old Chicken isn't committing his ulti to this, so they can actually go tier 2. I think Wings will be the one who have to react. The tier 1 dies first in their favor. Yep. And this tower still has a lot of health, so again, Energy pace maker with the nice moves. They're still go has, bottom though. Yeah, Dyer still have Glyph. I, I think they should try for a tier tier two mid. I think getting the bottom tower might be a little bit better than the tier two mid, just because it, it gives you full control of the woods, right? Yeah, like I guess. getting the tier two mid, you still have to worry about the tier one bottom when you're trying to go for smokes and maybe getting revealed a little bit early because of support positioning. So I do think that going for the tier one safe lane is the right call here. Well, it's now going to be Wings that's pressuring your tier two, and they're a lot better at pushing. So here we go. Clockwork is the first one to TP in. Nobody really in position yet. They also got the Ogre Creep, which I think is a pretty big deal in the mid game. Having that free frost arm armor. What is I it? Mean, eight armor, right? Is it eight? Yeah, eight armor and okay. reduces attack and movement. I mean, there's not a lot of physical damage at this point from EP, but every little bit helps. It's still a nuisance, especially if you're trying to chase down. You throw out an auto attack. Maybe you can't close distance anymore to try yeah. to get a spell off. It can definitely be uh, the difference maker here. And this Lena potentially? No, never mind. XDD is not coming towards here. Looks like LT will be more than fine. Oh. And the headdress is now finished. Tide has blink. Yep. So this is a very strong timing for Wings. Maybe he wants to get the full pipe before they decide to start trying to pressure any tier 2s or fighting around Roshan. I feel like that buff in of itself is a huge thing for Wings. And it cannot be undervalued in the situation. And SF is even getting closer to his BKB. Yeah, I think you wait for the BKB. The pipe might not be that important, but the BKB definitely is. Oh, I disagree. I think the pipe might even be more important than the BKB. Like, sure, if the Clockwork hits the Shadow Fiend with a hook, you could be in some trouble. But That's true. You still have Mech. You have Hannah God. There's no AA or anything on EP, so they have no way to counteract the heal. So you could probably still keep him alive, and there's a potential for the Jug to just Omni the Clockwork when he goes in if he's way too far out of position. So. I guess with Pipe, you essentially take out like the Lina and the Phoenix from the fight, essentially. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, they could just wait for both. Yeah, I mean, that's they're, what they're, they're going to no do hurry, for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're going to wait for both. Because they were around the same amount of gold away. Maybe the Chen was a bit closer to the pipe than SF is to mech right now. But either way, like having both of those. It's kind of a scary point for Wings too, though. Because once you have your full item progression, your team composition, it gets a little bit stronger through farm. But these are the absolute core items that make your team... I think, for the cost, the most effective they can possibly be. So if they don't get something big from getting these items out, I think EP will kind of just run away with the game. 
You think so? I think yeah. I think wings actually have very strong late game potential as well. I mean, Chen's to me one of the strong again. This this word scouts yet another. That is smoke. some serious value. Yeah, they're now gonna at least. Well, Ty's leading really far ahead. I'm not sure whether he he should be that far ahead, but here comes the juggernaut and the rest of the team. EP will dodge for now. The the rocket. I'm not sure whether it will give away their position. Looks like not. Scouting out the Roche. Nothing yet. And Lena gets caught. That shouldn't have happened. Well, they didn't see him in the Roshan pit, so maybe he assumed they were still behind the river. Because if they think two times in a row that they're smoking for Roche, then the obvious pathing would be to go just directly there, right? Like, if you smoke in, you go for it straight away. And then you try to kill it as fast as humanly possible. But that not the case. Yep. And it will cost them at least a lot of damage on that T2. Ward's already dropped down here. And these Shine Creeps going to work. Phoenix is in such a nice position, though. I think if he can dive in, kill the Healing Ward, and get some good Fire Spirits out, we could see a huge fight break out here. We'll see Flat Cannon working on these Chen Creeps. Mech and Han have got still on the reserve. And they'll back off. I don't think they have Pipe yet, so they don't want to force too much of anything. It's a safe call, yeah. for sure. The Pipe is now finished up on Super, though. He just got it on the Courier. So they'll be able to take a, an engagement, I think, and feel relatively comfortable so long as everyone uses their abilities properly. I'm not sure on the, the Ravage, though, like... I don't know if that ability does anything unless they immediately kill a hero off of it. I feel like this is the kind of team composition that if your ulti doesn't get a kill, it's automatically a waste. Like not even just like stopping people from pursuing you is not enough. You need to actually kill inside of the Ravage stun. I feel that Ravage could be used defensively this game as well. I mean if Clockwork Hooked gets a cog on, on a hero, let's say a hero that doesn't have BKB, your Tyhunt could blink in and just cut off their advancement path and then you deal with the clock, you get off your mecha hand of god and then I mean, I'm not sure how much offensive capability it will have once the BKBs are coming online for EP anyways. Well, that's kind of what I mean, right? Yeah. Because once they get BKBs, you, you Ravage, and it's like, if I don't kill them in the stun, they BKB, and then we have no damage. Yes. This SF has gone for mech BKB, which is, obviously, it's a good build, because you can apply a lot of early game pressure with it. But it does come with it, its inherent problems as against heroes like DK, who will have his BKB soon, like Old Chicken's farming very well. He's even second highest on net worth given the fact that he was getting completely dominated by Blink mid. It's just tough, you know? They have quite the burst, though. I mean, Requiem plus Omni Slash should be enough to actually get a kill, especially if they drop a Penance on top. Clockwork on the side. They see the Tide Hunter. will rock it. Is he going to go for the hook here? No. I think the rest of his team is maybe a bit too far. I don't think they could go into this. Well, DK just finished his BKB. I think they want to go in. Okay. Here we go. DK is going to come in. Dragon. Oh, he actually kills the healing war. LSA is going to miss double. BKB is going to get activated. But look at Fan. It's losing a ton of health as a result. The egg will be used. It looks like it's going to be retreat for wings. Hand of God as well as Pipe has been activated. I'm not sure about the mech though. So everything is down except the Ravage. I think wings now will repush. Definitely. You baited out two 10 second BKBs? Yeah. Or maybe that was nine from the gyro. The DK definitely just finished his. Okay, so it was two 10 seconds. And now. Like you said, nothing up. Wings feeling fairly confident. Just having the pipe to walk away was actually huge. Yeah. Like, no one took any damage at all during that Phoenix ulti, and they get out full HP, Do you get the now? tier 2 tower. You and rushing, I think, is actually the right call, yeah. if they can. We're going to get a chance to watch this one more time. Like you mentioned, Old Chicken killing the healing ward immediately. He eats a good amount of damage from the Omni Slash, and even though the cooldown, it manages to land on two, the pipe timing was perfect from Super. JDH took almost zero damage during that engagement. He gets Hand of Godded back up. The rest of Wings just back off and the egg pops and nothing really happens from either team. You know, the other thing that we didn't really talk about is that as this game progresses on, no field it's going to be a no field plus pipe. Yeah. I mean, your, your backline supports are not nuking for anything. It's still very far away for the Rubik because he's low level. Do you actually consider leveling it now, starting level 8? I, mean, I think a lot a of Rubik players do that. They they start leveling it before getting the max level of lift. Yeah. Because it's mostly the repositioning that you're looking for. It's just that level 1 lift is such a short stun that sometimes adding an extra point to it can make it feel, I guess, a better opener. It does increase your cast range, uh, allowing you to get off a better target, but yeah. I don't think... Uh, 25 I, cast range is like, eh. Yeah, is it, yeah whatever. And he's probably going to go for a, uh, a dagger soon. I am surprised by the, the no roach, though. I felt like with the Ravage up and the BKBs are down, they, they could have at least taken a crack at it. I can understand wanting it to play safe too, because they just showcased, even if EP pop everything, they still have the opportunity to just disengage from the fight if they choose. So for whatever reason, if EP decide to go for a Roshan fight themselves, I think Wings right now, they have Requiem, they have Tide Ravage. Fighting it in a closed space could be just as good for Wings as it could be for EP, because you also have to assume that mech is going to be hitting pretty much everyone and pipe on top of that. Yeah. So your five mana is going to be disgusting. 
So I'm very curious on the Clockworks item choice. He's got a Glove of Haste. Midas? Kind of a... Uh, well, I mean, if you're going for Midas, then you're saying, alright. No, I was kidding, because the other day, we saw Clockwork two games in a row by Midas. But obviously, I think he's going Treads. You, you know where I stand on this, right? Stand on what? On, on whether he should upgrade to Treads or Midas. You want him to get the Midas? Yeah, I okay. do. Okay. Because you think the game will end up going long because Wings doesn't have very good high ground. Yes. Well, I mean, they do have okay high ground, but I No, think they do. They do with the Pipe and Mech. Their team needs to be leading, I think, from a wider margin to They're even think about going high ground, or they need a good team fight to push off of, or Roshan. Like or, those yeah, yeah, factors. or Aegis, yeah. Well, they're going to get this T2 tower, I think. Unless EP gets a really good combo, I, I'm, I don't think they should be able to defend it. Okay, well, They'll tower slow it down Siege. Though. Tide even has four staff now, so in July, if he wants to go in, he does have a retreat mechanism, and he can also get himself out of cogs if he does get hookshot. The mech is finished, and here comes the hook. It's on the TIE Hunter. He'll get four staff out, and the X on the back line. Are they going to focus it? Yes, they will. Oh, Phoenix is dead. BKB are used, and Tie Hunter still looking for that Ravage. He will jump in soon. I think Old Chicken. Oh no, Old Chicken. Actually, they're blowing everything. The mech and Hand of God will be used. Now, again, w once again, everything is down on EP. They still have the Ravage, but they're going to play a save. They're retreating. Wings also popped all of their consumables as well, though. So the Healing Ward was used. They had Hand of God, they meched, they piped. It was pretty much everything that they had available. Now with the Phoenix dead, feeling a bit more content to try to go for Roshan now. A couple of abilities going to be off cooldown here from EP. Most importantly, the Supernova from Phoenix. It's amazing in Roshan Pit. If you can get like a high ground egg, yeah. if you time your dive properly, it can be... It, it's just insane to deal with. So I'm not really sure about that engagement from EP though. Maybe he didn't scout out the four staff on in July because obviously if you see that you don't initiate on the tide like right away. Yes. And maybe even defending a tier two in general against what wings have might have been more than they bargained for. Yeah. Right now EP just don't have the damage necessary to to pierce through everything of wings. And something that you alluded to earlier is that you think EP has a superior late game. I do. I do think the late game is a little bit better. But I also thought that their mid game would be going better as well. Wings are kind of just bullying them at this point. Yeah. They're walking into towers, they're taking them without real any real commitment. Even seems like XDD has opted to go for more of a late game option as well with the Battle Fury. Mm -hmm. Something that we've seen a few times here in the Chinese qualifiers. But I don't know if EP are feeling confident in the fact that they can defend their high ground, but that is the ultimate test for Wings lineup. Yep. I think they're forced to uh, defend their high ground soon because I believe the next tier 2 tower will be removed on the top lane. I'm standing actually with Wings when it comes to late game because double Ravage, sure you have 3 BKB cores, but eventually your BKB timer is, is already winding down fairly quickly. We can see that because of the mech, because of the pipe, these fights get to uh, drag out fairly long. Um, and you will actually get off 1 and maybe even 2 Ravages. So double Ravage in the late game is uh, pretty much a game winner for me. And I guess too with the Battle Fury Jug, you also have the the farm and yeah the farming ability the split push ability and it's pretty difficult for EP to gank him even in a solo capacity they kind of need the DK to have a shadow blade or something yeah if they want a shot at killing him because even a clockwork hook doesn't really kill jug if you have to use that to get in because then he can just spin in TP so you need a, another form of initiation that will catch him off guard but wings now with they're the just going down yeah they're just gonna go high ground EP will defend this though they pretty much have to yeah. Well, you, you just drop a call down and be like, hey, get off. It looks like they'll back, back off for now. They don't have too many chain creeps, too, I think. Without Healing Ward, I think what Wings want to go for here is just... They're counter-pressuring lanes right now with the chain creeps. Yeah. They might bring him back up there. I'm not entirely sure, but XCD's already gone. Yeah, they're backing off. I think just being able to push EP all over the map is helping Wings tremendously. They're just walking down to lane as five, forcing EP back into their base, and then they just immediately retreat and go farm every single lane. Yep. EP need to get something out of the smoke because they know Juggernaut just TP'd out. If they could find a big fight here without the Jug. Did they see the Shadow Fiend? I don't think they had Vision, yeah. No, definitely not. Most of their aggressive wards by now are pretty much gone. Actually, all of their wards now are defensive. There's, I think, one in middle lane on the high ground. Tie Hunter should it. be spotted. Clockwork is on the left of them, I believe, and they will actually see him. Can actually blink oh, away. No! He forced staff the wrong direction in July. We'll be fine. Hand of God. Well, actually, stolen. I think that was stolen hook. I'm not sure. No, that's no, better. Right. Yeah, okay. That was a really unfortunate force staff. Do you do something off of this? 40 mm. seconds? No, he's still just stacking. No, back 40 up. seconds yeah. isn't enough, I don't think. Like, the Tide Hunter can be alive and TP to a tier 2 and be at the Roshan pit even in time. I don't think your team kills Roshan very fast at all. Or, excuse me, Roshan is dead. Yeah. But. So what's the turning point for EP? Because obviously we're feeling that they're losing this mid game. Is there any big item that they're looking for? Maybe a level 16 DK with AC will turn the tide? Or is it we just need Gyro to be at like 5 solid? 
I think level 16 DK is kind of important, but the Gyro built drums, right? So he's going for more of a, a tanky build. He even yeah. has a Sange and then a BKB. So Fan's physical damage output is, is pretty low at this point. And I think having the mech on wings, like all the healing that they have, it's going to take a long time for this hero to actually start carrying in a physical damage sense. So maybe you even need like one or two extra items on your heroes of EP, even the Dragon Knight and the Gyrocopter combined. Because at this point, I'm kind of leaning more towards your side that wings, because they're controlling the map so much, that they just have the opportunity to farm more. And you can see that reflected in the net worth is the SF is number one. And even though the DK and the Gyro are ahead of the Jug, I'd say his potential for team fights might be a bit higher just because of how Omni is still pretty good against their heroes. Especially when you don't have that much defensive capability. They have the mech to actually keep things alive. Lena, oh, actually nice cutting through the trees, but might actually die as a result. Force Ooh. staff not helping them out. Well, that hurts. Yeah, could be another high ground attempt. No, they'll back off. So the way that Wings have been playing this is, is impressive to me because a lot of teams might feel pressured to just try to go high ground because you have this lineup, right? You have your Chen, you have your Tidehunter, who arguably does scale very well into the late game, but they're just making it so EP can't be anywhere. Yeah. They're always finding like a pick, they're always 5 manning to force EP's reaction. And more importantly, they're not getting picked. Has this Clockwork picked anybody? I think he killed the Tidehunter. But it was, was a mid-game fight, or mid-lane fight, right? It no, was... no, no, no. I mean by the Ancients, like when he, right, right, he right, hookshot okay. to secure the kill. But so far, yeah, the Clockwork had a significantly easier lane than in July as well. Like in July was sitting up there like 8 CS when the Clockwork had 20 and like level 6, and in July was level 4. Oh. Running to each other, but... Yeah, I mean, he has Invis, so... No big deal. More SNYs coming out. Yeah, what would happen in a kind of alternate universe where if EP was doing much better, you would have seen a lot of kind of two-man smoke gank between Lina and Clockwork, right? One goes and initiate, set up suns. I think that's what they did on the bottom lane against the Juggernaut with a quick pick. Well, they got a fog stun from the DK. Like, yeah. He popped Dragon Form and caught him, and next to he was standing right next to the tree line. So that was a really nice setup, but I do agree that that combination pretty much kills... Anybody. Well, in an early game situation, yeah, it kills pretty much anybody. Maybe not now that everyone on Wings is starting to get a little bit more farm, but I do feel XDD, if he's left to his own devices, he, he can carry this in the late game. Yeah. Just because of the fact that Battle Fury is going to accelerate his farm so much. Also, the improved Battle Fury lets you save the inventory slot that a Quelling Blade would otherwise take up. So he doesn't have to worry about that when he's farming in the jungle or maybe even farming EP's jungle if they're playing aggressive and forcing them out. EP, in my opinion, in a little bit of trouble now. They got the SMY, which is more kind of mid mid game item, but obviously can uh, disassemble for a late game Manta if necessary. I don't think Manta is actually good here at all. Just too much AOE. I don't. I'm actually not a huge fan of Manta in general, unless you're buying it against a team that has like a silencer or like an orchid or something. Like right. those are the two things that I, w or maybe even Puck, that I would buy Manta against. I, I just think that the item doesn't really offer a lot for the cost. Like you're buying an ultimate orb and a recipe for some illusions and, a, and this spell, which you can get from other places. So I'm not entirely a huge fan of it. Well, EP is doing a little bit of five man farming in the bottom lane because kind of have to actually back up that gyro. It's surprising to me that wings are still able to get so much given the situation. Like. Even XDD is farming their woods right now. They got. They I mean, to, they should be getting a lot, right? Yeah, but the SF is farming top. It just it's just showing that they're outmaneuvering their opponents because at this point, the entirety of EP are, are sitting bottom lane. They're yeah. being forced to TP back again, so they're going to be spending more time. I mean, yeah, you'll, you'll get the wave that's being pushed into your base, but they've only farmed their jungle like one clear maybe in the last couple of minutes, whereas wings are always clearing the jungle or EP's jungle. Yeah. I mean, uh, playing a slow farming game. Sure, in a lot of cases you might say that EP have very strong late game, but if you're not farming as fast as the enemy team, your item accumulation is just going to eventually overpower EP, and they might be able to go high ground off the next Rosha. I'm a fan of this Manta on Juggernaut. Not only does your illusions benefit from crits, you can somehow actually get off cogs if you kind of go into a corner and you Manta out. Yeah. Uh, again, not really a big part of it, but yeah, extra attack speed is nice. He's had that Yasha for a while as well. I think even being able to dis you can dispel the cooldown slow, right? Yes, you can. Yeah. So. Well, I, I guess you have to do it after the second call down. Cause, yeah, of course. Yeah. But I mean, the call down slows through BKB. Yes. So if you have it for that, I mean, it's it's still like little things like that can matter in some select situations. Or if you're super pro, you can just Manta dodge a Laguna Blade. No big deal. Actually, being able to Manta out of a DK slow is going to be relevant as well. Yeah, you don't want to get kited by yep. old chicken here. He is level 16. And he's going for the AC, which I think is really solid. 
Awesome against the Shadow Fiend. Almost completely offsets Presence of the Dark Lord. Pretty standard item on DK, but mm -hmm. it does have its merits here. Yeah, I think Clockwork should be looking for Aghanims and a Vlad. Not perhaps necessary in that or order. It looks like he's going to go for a BKB, which is also needed because of the High Hunter. Does he actually need BKB? I think it might be Axe. Then you open up a point booster, right? Well, Ogre Club might be cheaper, and at that time he might have needed buyback, or maybe he still wants to save for buyback. Because Roshan is probably going to be the next point of contention. It's up soonish, I think. Yeah, so like... I I personally like Axe more because it gives him the late game that he needs, but these Chinese teams in general love to go triple BKB core. Uh, I mean, again, there's a Tai Hunter you're going up against. Yeah, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just yeah. saying the Aghanims for me. So say you have a team fight scenario where usually the way that Energy Pacemaker play it is they, they go in with Clock and then the Phoenix goes in at the same time. And then one like the Phoenix obviously pops Supernova and then everyone focuses the egg instead of the Clockwork. Right. Like that's usually the, the order of targeting. So I'm wondering if he, if he needs BKB to stay alive in that situation when he's never really the first one that's getting focused down. Yeah. And generally like... Once the Clockwork throws out his spells, you can just ignore him for the most part if the fight is not around him. Yeah. I'm sure he has battery assault, but but having a 10-second hook allows him to uh, kind of re-engage and help out his teammates. It could be something, too, that we haven't even thought about. He could just be going for, like, some Halberd or something like that for the later game. Okay, that's a fair point. Yeah, BKB is kind of ticked down. I mean, Juggernaut, once he's already used his Omni, he's not really, like... Some Juggernauts build late-game BKB. But I think it's also more dependent on what build you go. I'm not sure if the, the Manta style Juggernaut buys a BKB. Maybe he just goes for Bash or Butterfly or something instead. Actually, late game triple Halberd. Yeah, it's really good so, yeah. against melee cores or even Shadow Fiend. Like, the SF will eventually get damage. At this point, he doesn't really hit that hard. He's up for SNF but, or SNY. But even with that, it's like 234 damage a hit. Not too bad. Yeah, I think EP is still in it uh, when it comes to late game, but... I just want to kind of re-emphasize the point that you're making that, yeah, sure, if they get the gold, they're definitely in it, but are they going to get the same amount of gold that Wings is getting? And the answer is, uh, at least for the fi past five minutes, Wings is, has been outfarming them quite significantly. We'll see if EP can make something happen here to force Wings maybe in a more defensive posture. Yeah. But I don't... I'm not sure right now. I mean, they do have a ward in the jungle, so they could look for... Do they have any smokes at the moment? That's the big question, because they think they might be saving one for Roshan. It's pretty common. Okay, they have two, so they can definitely use one for a gank, and then they can just go in for... I'm okay with what they're doing as, as well right now. Using that ward to allow them to farm the enemy jungle, instead of just sitting in their base and doing absolutely nothing. I mean, you mean for wings? For No, for EP. Oh, EP mean... is like farming on the bottom lane, farming some jungle. They're actually getting out of the map, despite the fact that they don't have as powerful of a mid-game lineup as wings at this point. Wings looking for something. And they're going to go in from behind here. Uh oh, this could be really bad. The first one they're going to run into could potentially be Clockwork, which not necessarily the best target. They do get one offensive ward down. And that ward sees the entire... Actually, no, that's not their ward. Oh, he dropped it in the sentry. Okay. Yeah. Well, see you later. Well, EPTPing back again. Hey, AC not finished in the Dragonite. I mean, Roshan spawning soon. Is it really the best call to go for this push now? I mean, yeah, keeping EP in the base is a good choice. I do agree with that. But for me, it's really pretty committing. much free. You still have the mech, you still have the pipe. If uh, fight gets, you know, a little oh, bit dangerous. Backing up. I mean, Roshan's spawning in, in three seconds. So they send a Chen Creep in here to scout? I think that's, yeah, here we yeah. go. And meanwhile, Juggernaut conveniently pushing out the bottom lane with yeah. his Battle Fairy. They know. But I don't think EP used a smoke yet. So if they want to, they can go in because they have that aggressive ward. So if they want to go for some kind of five-man pressure and force Wings back to try to get a better... Posturing for Roshan, they can do that. And at the moment, Wings have no smokes. Unless somebody's carrying one. I don't think they are, though. Wait, you're saying Wings go for the Rosh? Or EP? No, I'm saying EP go for a smoke. Uh -huh. And then try to force Wings back. Because if they get Roshan right now, I think Wings are in, in maybe too good of a position. Well, Wings are going to the Rosh despite having to deal with the fact that uh, the Phoenix Egg on the high ground is going to be a big deal, like you said earlier. But Roshan could be dropping very fast. Here comes a Rocket Scout things it's out. It's way too fast. They're not even close to being in position for this. Well... That will make things difficult for the next fight then, because now Aegis will be end up on the Shadow Fiend. I'm not sure whether he even needed it, to be honest. 
And Juggernaut. I, well, he's uh, the one hitting yeah. the tower. I yeah. think you do want to put it on him. Sure. Like Juggernaut, he can walk up there and hit, but he's melee. So there is a potential for like a hook shot, and then the Clockwork walks forward and blocks the entire Cogs ramp. him in. Yeah. yeah, it's way, way too risky, I think, for XDD even to try to go for that. But Blink, on the other hand, he can do it just fine. Where's that uh, refresher we're at? We're pretty close, missing about, let's say, 1,000, 1,200-ish. Well, he only has a ring of health. He needs to finish an entire Perseverance. So it's more like 2,500 or something like that, yeah. He's quite a, quite a ways away. Ooh, time to look for that, uh, the Rock Olam, man. That sustain. Oh, Rock Olam's no! Other oh, Ancients are actually dead, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's nice, but it's not a gigantic deal, I don't think. Well, it's 15% health. Maybe 15%, man. Yeah, okay, it's, it's actually a pretty big deal. Now the question is, SF going for the Scotty? I mean, he pretty much is going Scotty. Yeah. There's nothing really else that you can buy besides Hex, and I don't think he needs it. I mean, I don't think Manta's bad either. He could disassemble, actually. Yeah. He has SMY. But then he would have to, what, make this Ange into, like... Maybe still. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, we, I, we, we know. See the, we know. We're just theory crafting. Scriff, relax. Everything is okay. Sometimes we like to have fun. We enjoy Dota. Right. So this one, you know, they could buff this creep by having it allowed to cast uh, was a frenzy. Yeah, on on your on your allies. Would that be top? That seems top. Seventy-five attack speed for eight seconds seems pretty imba. No, but you make it uh take more damage. Like it's like a mom. Yeah, but it's the it's worst version, right? Yeah, but, but you get it for free. You don't get it for free. You get it for forty-two hundred gold. Well, you don't you don't get axe and be like, oh man, frenzy. <laughs> That's why we're getting axe for. But I'm saying you could give that creep a little bit more useful of ability. No, I, I don't disagree. I think it would be kind of cool yeah. to see more stuff like that. But I also think Chen is kind of really good already. Sure. It's very uncommon, like, in European Dota and NA Dota, Chen is picked all the time. Yeah. So, well, they, they do get their hands on their. That's goal. the game winner creep. All right. Ancient Rocco. Hopefully the lag dissipates. Nothing like watching game deciding fights at like 1 FPS or maybe I, less. I am okay watching uh, farming in 1 FPS because... Yeah, yeah, of course. Leaves us more time to theorycraft about stuff. Yeah. And speaking of, Fan, he's got a Demon Edge. I'm assuming that's just going to be MKB. But maybe... No, I don't think they feel pressured enough to go right here. Well, they, gonna they, might after this, they might after this, uh, after this fight. This is an Aegis push. Yeah. We might see a divine here. Flak cannon being used to. Actually, not even flacking yet. Birds being dropped. Slow attacking. Not really fighting just yet. This tower is going down. Looks like there's not much they could do about it. Hand of God being used, but it it is on a 30 second cooldown, so they could actually just wait like 20 seconds and re just go back in again. And there's no reason to back at all, yeah. in my opinion. But that was second rush, right? So the third one is gonna have cheese. Yep. And I think if EP lose a lane here, it's going to be so difficult to get There is no the buyback one. on Gyro anymore. He's finished his MKB, so this could be it if they lose the fight. Yeah, this is all in. Yeah. Rico, just focusing on the SF, and obviously SF doesn't care. The grind and golem getting in there as well, too. I mean, Fire Spirits are such a long cooldown. Is it really okay for him to just be throwing them out? I mean, I guess... It kind of yeah, needs to. You want to kick him out of the base, but I think you just wait for creep waves to use it, right? No, I think you just have to use it. Okay. Like, you just throw out all your... Oh, God, your refresher stuff. on in July on this yep. push. Oh, my God, this is such a hard push to stop for EP. Do you... Hmm. I don't think sacking your racks really does anything because they just move on to the next one. No, yeah, that's just it. Yeah. Well, he's going to see a dive. No egg coming out. Oh, it's going to be a Rax one way or another. Maybe they get the missile stun here. The blink eats it. That's this a 30-second kind of... cooldown on the Hand of God, so it's not really a big deal that they popped it there. I mean, those creeps are never going to die. Like, they're just going in with new creep waves, and right now, EP can't do much. Defensive cog used here. LSA, Dragon Slave. I mean, they are nuking down the wave, and in fact, Dragon Form committed. They are going to go. They got the Frenzy Creep, and oh. they're going to get the Grind at Golem. They're focusing on the Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend does have the Aegis, gets four stat back out, but hey, that's a pretty good defense. Lost the. Oh, I mean, did end up losing the range racks, but I wonder why they didn't do that much earlier. Mm, I think it was actually a very opportune time because. The couple of auto attacks coming out from the Dragon Knight just isolated the Shadow Fiend. Or is that what you mean? That he didn't pop his ult sooner? Yeah, to, to go f to kill the Chen Creeps and then... Because we, we've seen all those spells being used multiple times. Like the Cogs and the LSAs and Dragon Slaves. Yeah, that's a little bit surprising. Maybe yeah. he just figured if he popped his ult, he had a bad time. 
Winx could just completely disengage. Yep, and, and then, then wait with it no out. ulti, then you just literally can't fight. Like, the DK ulti is way too important to not have during his yep. engagement. So I, I can kind of see why he held on to it for as long as he did. But still, right now, Wings in a, a very good position, keeping Energy Pacemaker inside of their base for a very long time. They do have one smoke left, but that smoke's going to have to do so much. I think you can't even use it until the next Roshan unless they have one coming off cooldown in that time. Do you feel the next item that Jaro gets is a Divine? If, like, nothing changes from the status quo. Like, I just think that they need more damage. A lot more. I think maybe just the MKB is enough if Wings don't have Aegis during the team fight. I do believe that they can kill the Shadow Fiend. Yes. But I don't know if they can kill both cores, but I think just killing one of them kind of delays the game a bit, and maybe if you get out with your Gyro alive and your DK alive, you can make that trade and then try to go for a later stage in the game where you actually have real damage output on your Gyro. But if Wings secure next Aegis, I actually don't know what EP are going to be able to do to stop them. Ancient Black Dragon. That creep doesn't have any cool abilities, right? It just, it just flies around. I mean, it's a dragon. What else do you want it to do? Brief Fire? It looks pretty goofy, though, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> Look at them teeth. It's like a walrus face. It's Why not a man? dragon. Don't flame a dragon. Dragons have feelings, too. Look at that thing. All right, we're getting sidetracked by dragons, but it's okay. It happens to everyone. Oh, wow. Old chicken just TPing back to base. They should make the dragon like a gambler. You give it gold and get stronger. I'm so glad you do not balance Dota. I mean, I, I mean, love this, you. This is my, like, you know... This is the Lumi segment where he just says something totally random. This is why I love casting these long Chinese games. Because you can just talk about stuff yeah. that's completely I mean, ridiculous. do you want me to say that Shadow Fiend has the highest net worth? Like, people can see it on the screen. All right. That's fair. Which, by the way, uh, Shadow Fiend, next item should probably be Butter. Even Well, there is an MKB online, but... He could go AC as well. Yeah. I think AC is really nice. Or yeah, you could I go think. back from the Manta if he deems it necessary. Which... Yeah, Manta's good for high ground. Ooh. Man, Shadow Blade on DK. I yeah. really feel like that was 100% necessary. Like, how else are they going to even find kills? Even having the Shadow Blade, though, I feel like it's a little bit weaker against 5-man Dota. Maybe he buys it to try to rat a bit, but... I, I don't think it's the Shadow Blade he's buying for. He's buying for the Silver Edge. 40% well, yeah, damage course. to reduction. Yeah, he's, he's going he's gonna to build it. Yeah. You can use it on XTD to disable I mean, crit. But... Then, then compare Sh Silver Edge to another damage item around that cost. Like, let's say Daedalus. Is that just... Well, you also have to consider the fact that if he manages to find Angeli with a break, there's no Kraken, so they can stun lock him to death. That's true. They That's huge, actually. Yeah, they can just straight up kill him. Unless he does so much damage with the first hit that... No, it applies does it work break, I think, before be you deal before damage. Before the damage? Okay, yeah, that I makes sense. Because so. that would be kind of silly, right? No, that's absolutely the case. Um, have you ever... No, 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 it doesn't. Are you sure? It doesn't. I remember getting it versus an Enchantress. I was like... Fuck this untouchable. Oh, right? you couldn't get the first hit. I couldn't hit get off. the first yeah, hit. Okay, okay. Yeah. The only thing it works is against evasion because it specifically says we'll go, yeah, we'll oh, hit evasion. Oh, just going kill. in. He oh, pops a mantle. Okay, oh. What is that game sense? Can they just kill? kill what's the hook? Hook law? And there's going to be a stun. Can they do enough damage? Yes, they can. Yeah, he's dead. That's huge. They bought themselves at least 80 seconds. And is Roshan coming up? Okay, was that smoke scouted by a ward mid or did they smoke high ground? I'm not sure. Because they do have wards mid. They're I was gonna, busy talking yeah. about, like, you know, yeah, Enchantress versus Silver Edge. Yeah, wondering if dragons could gamble and if Enchantress Silver Edge apply. I mean, dragon no. definitely love gold. Haven't I'm you seen, like, wrong. Desolation of Smog? I'm not saying you're wrong. Yeah, I feel so culture because I watch a movie. You watch a movie that literally everyone has probably seen. Yeah, but now, I'm in the in-club now. Because I haven't even watched Star Wars, culture. you know, like, so. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, this is fair. Now, Roshan up here in about a minute. Oh, by the way, Clockwork never finished uh, his Ogre Club item. He's gone for a Ghost Scepter. I like that, actually. Because if he hooks, for example, XDD, or he gets Omni at all, maybe yeah. he just feels if he goes too far in, he's just a guaranteed death, really. So he needs something that's going to make sure that he doesn't just get isolated and is killed straight up. So I do think it's a really solid item. So what next for Tai Hunter? Shiva's Guard? Hex? Mm, Shiva's is really nice. I've always liked Shiva's just because if you do get the first Ravage off, you pretty much guarantee the double Shiva's damage, so long as you do your combo properly. And, like, don't give uh, Energy Pacemaker any time between the stuns to actually use their BKBs. Yep. But it also gives you a mana pool. As Tidehunter, even with, like, four Steph Arcanes, doesn't really have that much mana. Well, he has the double regen from the... Yeah, his sustain yeah. is good, but his overall mana pool is still only It's a okay, it's respectable. And he is yeah, going to be going Shiva's. Gonna go Shiva's. 
You know, we said this was going to be a quick series limit. This I series, didn't. I didn't. Well, I said 2-0. Was, was it Cinder who said it was going to be a fast series? No, I, I said 2-0, but well, curse it, it's going to be a long 2-0. No, nah, I kind of figured it would be long too. I mean, yesterday Wings picked Morphling and Spectre in two yeah. different games. So I kind of assumed that it might have been one of those longer series. Do you regret though? No, I don't regret it at all. Oh, DK is going to get scouted. It's going to go into Chan. I'm not sure what they're going to get the kill. Well, the Clockwork Hook's gonna go in, they're gonna blow everything on Chen, but what a four staff! He's back out, DK tanking up in the front line. He's down to about half HP there on the run. BKB's almost out, double Ravage is available. I really think he'd be able oh, to run Ravage here. Ravage on the back line? Well, BKB actually got used on the Gyro. DK's coming in, I'm not sure whether he can. Refresh on the Ravage, but he's gonna get hit by the, the missile. I think the Link Dagger's still on cooldown for a little bit. Egg just kinda hanging out on the back line. It's a back and forth fight. Okay, EP actually have to run now because they you do. refresh Ravage. There's no way they can fight this anymore. They have to get out. There's no Supernova. There's no BKBs. Wings not even going to pursue. Just to, They're going to try to make Energy Pacemaker fight around Roche because they know that there's no ultis up. This is actually such a good decision from Wings. Dude, DK form is about to run out too. I, they just have to back. Okay, they're getting laser beamed by a chicken. Well, here comes the second Ravage. It hits just about everybody. Lena gets blown up oh. immediately. Meanwhile, Clockwork, he does have to go step it. He will have to use it right now. Clockwork call down hits on everybody. And looks like they're focused on the Tide Hunter. Tide Hunter does have the armor that he got earlier. Flacking off these Ancients. Nobody just dying just yet. Finally, they're going to go for the Tide. Tide could blink out. I think oh, he blink. Blink Arena. He's going to make it home. Meanwhile, Blink Dagger coming in from the Rubik as well. It's just still chaos. And somehow EP is kind of in the fight despite getting three-man Ravage right in the get-go. Meanwhile, Old Chicken's running right in. And it's going to be a whole <laughs> throw into the Requiem. Old Chicken pops the BKB, but will die thanks to the Scotty. Meanwhile, the high ground here, the Phoenix is going to go down as well. Fan will pop the drum and run away. Uh, looks like the clock's going to go down as well. I mean, I'm not sure why they chase so hard. So the difficult part for EP is they know Roshan is, is not necessarily a game ender, but it puts Wings in such a good position to be able to take another set of racks. I mean, sure, they only took the range mid, but they can now go mid and another lane on top of that, and it becomes increasingly difficult for Energy Pacemaker to keep themselves in the game. So they bait out the DK's BKB. I actually think that going on Chen, I mean, yeah, I kind of get it. You want to kill the guy who has the pipe and the mech, but he's nobody so else. Yeah, he's so tanky, and nobody else from the team was even there. XCD, good oh, able to get into the face okay. here. Cogs, four step out from JDH. Calldown's going to be there as well. Blink doesn't even care. He's just sitting there auto attacking. He will probably get his Aegis popped here, Where did and he will this? indeed. There's no Ravage. I yeah. think he actually dies again. Yeah, well, unless he could BKB, but it looks like it's all. Oh, send home, send home. Four step away. There's the pipe as well. I think Blink wow. will actually be fine. Okay. Nice save. So Wings now have to go on full retreat. Do they actually have anything to catch out this TP from JDH? They do not. Clockwork Hook is... Oh, no, it's still dead. Never mind. They will get the, the Ancients, which is a decent win. I mean, I really think that XTD just flying up that high ground with no vision maybe a little bit uh, little bit ballsy. You don't expect EP to defend like that, right? Because they were so cautious with yeah. all the previous defense. And suddenly That's you walk true. up the high ground, there's a DK in Dragon Form hitting you. In fact, they're going to go the other way, hoping maybe to force out buyback. But regardless, they're going to get a T2. I don't think EP had to use any buyback for that defense either, right? No, the DK bought back. Okay. When he died around Roshan, Old Chicken bought back. That was his first death of the game. Holy crap. He hasn't died at all. Well, there's only 12 to 13, so... Yeah, okay. Not Maybe not as impressive. I'm just trying to give the guy some credit. He hasn't died at all. Well, Luminous, he did die once now. The, the credit denier. <laughs> no one can do well in Lumi's games. No. All right, another T2 being claimed. That, that go graph's going to reflect, and I think all those tower gold is going to be so beneficial to that gyrocopter because still need them to items. Just keeping the racks alive in general for DP was a gigantic win. This gyro has 6.5k gold. He can buy an entire item off of this. I don't think it's going to be rapier. Maybe I don't he, think they're desperate enough for that rapier. Maybe yet. he goes uh, butterfly still. I mean, the jug has MKB, but butterfly is just such a good item in general. Oh, no, he's going satanic. Sure. Okay. Okay. I mean, I think you don't necessarily need to get evasion because if you could ask your supporter to get it for you via solo crest. Yeah, that's true. And we also are kind of getting to that stage where maybe... And Omni Slash doesn't guaranteed kill the Gyro anymore. And after the Omni's down, you can just pop Satanic and kind of heal back to full health, right? Yeah. Like you just sit there with Flat Gun and you just auto attack. Looks like we're going to see perhaps a. Well, that's an. It was a Scotty orb, right? Like he's buying it for Scotty? I think I want to say he had it for the early game. No, I don't think he did. I don't think okay. he had an orb. Maybe, it... maybe he did, but I don't, I don't remember him having yeah, it. Yeah, I don't remember him having it either. That's why I was confused. Is Scotty the item, though, for Chuck? Makes him much tankier. I guess he is going kind of a right-click build. Like, he bought Manta. He didn't buy Aghanims or anything Isn't like Basher that. Isn't Basher just better? Oh, Basher, I think, is better if you already have items that let you close the gap. Like, he... 
He went Manta, so it's a little bit slower movement speed than having an S and Y, and he doesn't have really anything like Mask of Madness to get him close to the Gyro, so he's relying on the Tidehunter, I guess, for Ravages. But yeah, I think Basher is also very strong. Meanwhile, looks like Lina's working towards an Aghanim switch. Not exactly the game decider, but will be nice against the uh, BKB in the spin. Oh, absolutely. 975 damage? The yeah. Juggle only has 2k health. Like, he can die very, very easily. He's built I pretty mean, much primarily damage items. But there's so much heal, though, on wings. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. They, they have the, the no field, the pipe mitigation. They got lots of stuff. A lot of passivity coming out here from wings. I guess that one failed high ground attempt kind of hurting the morale maybe a bit. I mean, that's giving more time for EP to actually recur that buyback cooldown. But EP is not even really pushing either. I think both teams are feeling a little bit, like, not scared, but hesitant to try to go for anything huge. They will get a wolf creep, though. EP is scared. EP is in their base. Yeah, well, wings were kind of standing around for a while, too. Yeah. The thing that's really difficult about playing a lot of late-game situations is you don't have nearly the kind of warding that you do during the earlier or the mid-game. So oftentimes it becomes a lot more difficult for you to make... And you have less towers giving you vision. Yeah, so. you, you don't have the freedom of making these educated decisions of, oh, well, I see them here, so now I can just deduce that I can do this. It becomes very, very hard, and it is a 52-minute game. So On that note, it helps uh, the team with the clockwork, giving that little bit of extra vision. Yeah, to a down. degree. Yeah. They will place one fresh ward here in the jungle of Energy Pacemaker. There's Ashiva's finish on the Tie Hunter. Buyback check, because uh, it might come relevant, is uh, Jaro has his, and he's mostly the relevant person for the dire side. I don't think that EP will be able to force any buybacks from Wings unless Roche ends up. Especially if Wings are the ones pushing in to Energy Pacemaker space. Yeah. Because it takes way too much time to not only deep push like two lanes and be able to get down the lane to Wings base and try to apply pressure, but smoke up here. All right, so I think Cheese was passed towards the Shadow Fiend and uh, Scotty is finished on the Jug. And we'll see whether that Scotty actually pays off. But they're just looking for a quick pick on the DK or the Gyro. Or just a ravage the whole team, you know, that's cool too. Yeah, I think the gyro might be more important than the DK. Oh, he does have the satanic clockwork. Oh man, he's so tanky. On the front line. Are they looking for a blink lift or are they just... Dude, blink ravage is going to get everybody right now. They're so close. Yeah, they can't see though. Alright, in July, time to YOLO. Pop that Shiva's going. You got this. Oh, oh they just smoked. Okay. And they're going to go oh, to my the God. right. Are they going to go far enough left to break it? No, they're nobody so breaking it. Okay, they will see it right now. They're hooked on the DK. Oh, actually, four staff on the background. Call down is going to hit just about everybody. I'm not sure exactly what was stolen. DK form being used by Pipe. Letting them retreat. DK doing a little bit of harass. BKB has to be used right now. It's actually going into the lion's mouth of that Juggernaut. No only stats is used right now. And the egg's going to be used on the back line. Rabbit's going to hit. It looks like DK is dead on the second TP out. He would not make it home. And double buyback needs to be forced right now. I don't think DK has buyback from that. No, he doesn't check. have buyback. That cog actually hurt Energy Pacemaker so unbelievably bad. Like, they wanted to go in, but as soon as he dropped the cog, nobody from EP could follow it up. They're going to force the buyback here from Fan right now. And this is make or break for EP. I think if Wings get even a little bit here, they could go for double racks. Okay, another buyback coming in from Lina. Phoenix trying to do what he can, just dealing a little bit of damage to force XCD back. They do have another Ravage still. Yep, not using it just yet though. He might be using it soon. Flak, I think it's down. It's down for like 20 more seconds. So I think Wings, happy with what they got. Double buyback and melee racks. They'll back off for now. Wait out a little bit more. That was such a tense situation though. Like that easily that could have been. Yeah. Could have been it for either side. Unfortunately, Ty Hunter was the one that received the Clockwork Cook. And yeah. he, he's so tanky, he got forced back out. I Those still think the cogs though. Like, it, fan pop, Flak Cannon. And like. He wanted to go in straight up, like just fight, because there were so many heroes close to each other that he could have dealt an insane amount of damage. Mm -hmm. But the cogs allowed Wings to retreat, like completely. They just yeah. pop pipe, they walk away, they baited out a couple of BKBs, and then Old Chicken just walks up by himself, like, yo, 1v5, no big deal, I got this. And then he, he just gives away... It. Yeah, he doesn't even have buyback. Yeah. So, I don't know, that was definitely a, a misplay there from Energy Pacemaker. Yeah, I think in that position, um, not only the cogs helped Wings to escape. They EP also had to walk up to a high ground situation, right? Because they were on the low yeah. ground of that round. And I think what was what happened there was the Rocket Flare gave them um, high ground vision momentarily. They're like, okay, let's go. And then suddenly they lost it after it went out. And they were like... You think the Flare was down for that long? No, the Flare hit. So they had high ground vision for a bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. And as soon as they were... Tr okay, let's go. And then they lost vision. I'm not sure if that's what happened. But like suddenly the, the team felt like they were lost and, and, and didn't know what to do. 
The egg also didn't do too much of anything because of the pipe. Yeah. I don't think the stun actually even hit anybody. The Phoenix, to me, has not really even done a thing this game. Like, sure, he, he's only died twice. It's not to say that the play is the problem. It's more like... The hero? In every single situation, the Chen just totally deletes the Phoenix from the fight, right? Like, just having the Null Field and the pipe, just between those two things, it's 30% more magic resistance. And then you also have the active on the pipe, which is 400 mitigation. And you have Glimmer Cape on Rubik now as well. So there's never really a time where Energy Pacemaker can deal a large enough amount of AoE damage, which I feel they're heavily reliant on as a team. Yeah. Like, you don't pick Gyro and Phoenix and DK to not have a good amount of AoE. It's just not enough at this point. Okay, what about this, right? If DK goes in, O-Chicken hangs it up. Phoenix jumps in, ag ults, pick up the DK. Clockwork does he have in. agonims? I Wait. don't think he does. Well, that's the next step. I guess so. I don't know, man. That's still super, super risk play. I guess if you had a blink dagger and agonims, you could potentially save, and then maybe try to force another like reinitiation or something. But it's pretty clowning. Smoke up here from Energy Pacemaker. Roche is up in about 20 seconds. Wings currently residing on EP's woods. I'm sure they will make their way towards that pit momentarily, as they have to know that Roshan's going to be spawning soon. You know that one thing we didn't talk about earlier is that uh, when Juggernaut ran up the mid ramp and died immediately, what happened was uh, Clockwork also dropped the cog, and, and Juggernaut just can't attack because all the all the dire here was inside the cogs. They could attack out, and Juggernaut could yeah. not attack in. So the cogs have been uh, kind of pretty pivotal this game. Roshan trying to get sneaked. Well, Ancient's okay. gonna scout Not it out. Not sneaky anymore. Well, they're now kind of stuck. Rabbit's gonna hit, and the eggs gonna be on the high ground. Second Rabbit's gonna come through. They gotta heal their heroes. Can he pop the BKB? No, he cannot. So no Satanic. And meanwhile, the Dragon Knight's trying to fight. There is no more buyback on that gyrocopter. On the low ground, they're throwing everything on the Shadow Beam. The Shadow Beam's so tanky, though. That's gonna be it. GG called an energy pacemaker. Drops game one. So I gotta say, I didn't really have full faith in Wings draft this game. I will admit it. I thought that it would have been very difficult for them to win, but they went with the age-old strategy of just making it so you couldn't actually farm anywhere because of just constant pressure. And here comes in July. In my opinion, really solid performance out of him in general. He gets Fan killed before he's even able to pop BKB or Satanic. The focus fire from Wings in this Roshan fight being pivotal and taking the game. Yeah, and normally when you play that kind of, hey, you can't farm anywhere strategy, it's through very mobile gankers like Storm or Queen of Pain that has uh, had a very strong snowball. But Wings did it in, with pushers. Like, we knock down all your towers, we set up wards, and if you ever come farming jungle, we will just kill you. Yeah, that's so very it's true. pretty impressive play. All right, so we are back here in the studio. Thank you guys for rejoining us, Gods, Cinderin. What did you guys think of the game? It was really interesting. Those late game fights, I feel the Radiant Force stuffs paid for themselves in oh, spades. Yeah. Like that was, to me, the decisive items more so than any like the, the tide refresher definitely helped give them that like second ulti in a fight. But it was the fact that they could get out of any bad engagement. Like initially in the early game, they used the pipe to help their cover their retreat. But in the late game, the Force stuffs out away from the the clockwork cogs and just putting the cogs in these terrible positions yeah. led to led to the downfall for EP. And what was interesting to see was EP once again had a good early game. They got quite a few kills in the early laning stage, and then they fall short mid-game again. It's kind of like the same story over and over again, right? They, they build an advantage. It wasn't big enough, and ultimately, they just let the Radiant farm a hell of a lot. Do like, you think that was because they played it poorly, or just because... To me, it was more the item timings. Like, they got the pipe, the mech, and then just... Yeah, when push. you... It's obviously difficult to push into the pipe and the mech, and maybe just strategically, they needed to shut down the Chen some more, so he didn't... like. This was what we talked about pregame, actually, that Chen would be able to get another item instead of the mech, since yep, they yep. could get that on the Shadow Fiend. And in this case, for him to get a pipe early, if you look over at the Dire lineup, that's like an incredibly good item against a hero like Gyro, who is he is a spread, a, a spread damage carry later on, but in the early game, Flat Cannon doesn't deal that much physical damage. Dragon Knight, a big part of him, is still also magical damage early on with Breathe Fire. So they get the key items they need to stay alive in the game, and they just get to farm. And then ultimately, come late game... Uh, the Tide re Refresher and Shiva's Guard, and of course Juggernaut, as well as Shadowfiend, getting to farm as much as they want, where the Dire don't really get to itemize as much. You can't really, you can't really win that game as the Dire ultimately yeah. in the late game. I think it gets really difficult. Phoenix falls off massively, especially with those items. You have like nothing. Yep. And, yep. Um, well, that last fight, all he was hoping for is like a supernova stun. Like he does zero damage. Like for the yep. last 30 minutes of the game, he was doing zero damage in, in, in a fight. The Fire Spirit slope at that point has kind of fallen off as well and isn't that relevant. So yeah. he was just a supernova stun. And even then, that last fight, it takes five seconds before the sun goes off, whatever it is. And by that time, Jarocopter was already dead. So yep. 
Yeah, what did you guys think of the, the DK itemization? The fact that he decided to go for BKB Halberd instead of Shadowblade? I felt with XTB being Juggernaut, they maybe needed something else to be able to open up on that hero to try to cause some kind of map pressure. Because as God said, when you get the pipe up and you have the Chen and the mech heal, it becomes very hard to actually 5 versus 5. So I felt they got stuck into passivity by not having more items that would allow them to initiate. Yeah, I think Shadowblade would have been better yes. earlier on, too. You need to play from ahead when you get ahead early on with this lineup. And well, it got the to the though. point where Clockwork couldn't also initiate because of the four stuff. So once you get to the, once you get there, you need the DK kind of scouting and going in first, and the Clockwork more is like the mid-game, the mid-team fight counter-initiator. So I, I kind of definitely agree that Shadowblade would have been a better option. I felt like if, if the, the Clockwork ganks weren't doing it, because the Radiant team was fine manning the whole time, right? I don't think a Silver Edge or a Shadow Blade would have done it either. I think the Force Staff would have been just there as was, effective. There was like 10 to 15 minutes, though. Like, okay, maybe even 20, where I don't feel like the, the five man from Wings was insurmountable. I feel like there were actually opportunities to go for kills. And like we were talking about the Force Staffs there, how hugely impactful they were. Like, Zhao Tule never got a situation where there was like a, an effective like hook into Cog and then getting a kill off of that. Yeah. It was always just like you would trade or they would just straight up lose the fight. Yeah. They dealt with the gyrocopter too. Like gyrocopter at the end of the game had like one kill, five assists, and had this ridiculous amount of farm. But he never really found any openings or any way to do damage in a team fight. The spread down, having that much spread damage didn't work out. I feel like maybe even allocating more farm towards the Lena, who never even finished an ag scepter. They didn't seem to have enough single target burst damage against the Chen with Mech, Hand of God, the Pipe, everything going on on the Radiant side as far as they sustain. Having pure spread damage was a recipe for disaster as well. Yeah, I love I love seeing the fact that they pick a jungler. They get through the early game, and Chen gets farm. Like, I've seen a couple of games where you, you play Chen, you play for the early ganks, and then Chen kind of just falls out of the map a bit and let others take farm. I think it's pretty underestimated how strong Chen can be with farm. Like, in this game, because he doesn't need to get mech, he got pipe, he got four staff, and he got the Ag Scepter. So they get the Granite Golem for the five-man pushes and everything. And in, in terms of economy, you just get an advantage here over this... The dual, the dual roaming support or dual static lane support that pretty much every single team in this competition has run. And there's just... I've, I've seen so many drafts already in these qualifiers where I'm like, they could go for a jungler. They could go for a jungler. These yeah. heroes can't invade their jungle. They can't contest. Why don't you get an Enigma? Why don't you get a Chen? And this time they do it. Even though the early game didn't do so go so well, he's still massively impactful on that hero. And oh, he was huge. Like, that so. early pipe was what let them... Yep. To me, win the game. That was the turning point of the game. And even in the late game, he was like the set, like when the Shadow Fiend died mid with Aegis, he respawns like four heroes surrounding him. Send back. Yep. Send back. Easy. And that wasn't even like a crazy good, that was just basic Chen play. But what was, that really highlighted also that the Dire's weakness in the late game where they couldn't even kill a Shadow Fiend quick enough when he's surrounded by four heroes. They had no damage from Gyrocopter from the Dragonite despite both of them having like 25k net worth. Yeah, I mean, I think we kind of we went over pretty much everything in that yep. game, right? <laughs> I think we we kind of beat that one to death. That was good. All so, right. what do you guys think for next game? Like, what um, do Energy Pacemaker need to do differently to try to win? Um, mm. I think if if they if they play into a Chen again, I think they need yeah. to go and shut down the jungle harder in the start, okay. um, if Isn't possible. Like bounty hunters or something. They've actually he got run banned the bounty though. Hunter. Yeah, they yeah, banned. Yeah. Did they have the heroes to shut it down though? They I had feel a like chance to. They tried to at the pick, Phoenix. Like right? remember early in, like Phoenix and Chen were just like trading hits for a bit. The Phoenix definitely kind of sacrificed his own farm a bit, but it wasn't enough. Chen was seventh pick, right? Mm. He wasn't eighth, so they had an opening to pick bounty, but I can't remember if they picked two supports already. No, no, at that no. Point. The bounty was banned by the time they picked. It was the a Chen. fifth ban. Bounty was banned in the last phase. He was well, yeah, but it was a, it was a pick into a ban. You're right? sure. You're I'm sure Chen sure. was the last pick of the second phase. I'm pretty sure. Okay, because Cause then they couldn't do it. Yeah. But else that would have been interesting. I don't. I don't know if they had two supports already. I can't remember the order. I think but. one way you beat the Chen is you beat the safe lane and you beat the mid lane. You force the Chen to f help instead of farming. Well, he did the the tornado spam. Like well, he, yeah, but that was <laughs> such a small commitment. Yeah, for him. It was like, yeah, yeah. It was no he commitment. gets one creep and he's like, oh yeah, you won your lane. I'm out of here. Yeah. I'm saying like you make that juggernaut not have a good time, and Chen has to come help. And Chen is not stacking the jungle nonstop. He's not farming nonstop. Yeah. All right. I guess we haven't decided which one of us is hosting it, right? <laughs> so we're all, oh, we're all that's, just that's like me. carrying all on right, the conversation. It's just okay, like let's send it to commercial break. Uh, yeah, shout out to Monster, who's our sponsor. Uh, we'll back. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Kind of gone is online, so you gotta factor in mind. Factor that in mind. Maybe you could go for the Chen girl. Oh, they see each other. Here we go. It's going to be called down coming in. Rabbit's going to come out. Hand of God will be used. It's going to be fan taking a ton of damage in return. The mech's going to come through on the other side. 
And Old Chicken is running to the left. Fiery Birds are coming in. So will Hook and a actually really good Supernova in the background. Laguna Blaze is going to drop. Looks like the Juggernaut is dead automatically. And Wings really overcommitting after that Ravage. High Hunter forced to retreat as well. I think he will die. Rubik getting a little bit of help here. They might actually pick up the Leon. No, they won't. It's going to be four dead at the end of the fight. Could be five because Shen's being stalked as well. Nice push to the left. They're still chasing him. And they will finish the Rubik. So four for one exchange after using the Ravage. They have the mech to actually keep things alive. Lena, oh, actually nice cutting through the trees, but might actually die as a result. Force staff not helping them out. No, I don't regret it at all. Oh, DK is going to get scouted. It's going to go into Chen. I'm not sure whether they're going to get the kill. Well, the Clockwork Hook is going to go in. They're going to blow everything on Chen, but what a force staff. He's back out. DK tanking up in the front line. He's down to about half HP. They're on the run. DKB's almost out. Double Ravage is available. I really think he'd be able oh, to run Ravage here. Ravage on the back line. Well, BKB actually got used on the gyro. DK's coming in. I'm not sure whether he can refresh on the Ravage, but he's just going to get hit by the, the missile. I think the Link Dagger is still on cooldown for a little bit. Egg just kind of hanging out on the back line. It's a back and forth fight. Okay, EP actually has to. Nobody else from the team was even there. XCD going to oh, even Laguna to the face okay. here. Cogs, four step out from JDH. Calldown's going to be there as well. Blink doesn't even care. He's just sitting there auto attacking. He will probably get his Aegis popped here. Where did and he will this? indeed. There's no Ravage. I yeah. think he actually dies again. Yeah, well, unless he could BKB, but looks like.